Hi, my name is Jara. I teach people how to garden and grow food. This is my lettuce growing guide. I'm gonna teach you guys how to grow lettuce from seed all the way to harvest. Lettuce is one of the easiest things you can grow. If you're a beginner gardener, I highly recommend that you try to grow lettuce and get good at it because then you could take those skills and apply it to some of the harder crops like Napa cabbages. And it's very quick to harvest from seed. You're gonna be harvesting anywhere between 30 to 55 days depending on the cultivar. So I'm gonna be talking about how to grow lettuce, but this also works for tatsoi, bok choy, and some of the Napa cabbages. First, let's talk about cultivar selection. So when you're shopping around for lettuce seeds, there's so much to choose from. And there really honestly isn't much difference between all of them, except for a couple things. You're gonna look at color. There's so many different colors of lettuce from green to like a pink blush, to even something as dark as this burgundy red right here, which is one of my favorites. This is called um, super red romaine lettuce. And then there's different kinds of textures. Um, some people like softer lettuces, like this um, butterhead type lettuce right here called Butter Crunch. Some people like the more firmer, crunchier types of lettuces, like the romaines, for example, again, <laughs> the super red romaine. This is also a romaine, it's called Cimarron. And so depending on what you're looking for, I personally like crunchier, crisp salads. So I have a tendency to go for the romaines. And just to get an idea, you can go to your local grocery store and walk through the lettuce aisle and you'll probably see a lot of great examples of romaine, iceberg, uh, loose leaf lettuces. This one right here is called Lola, Lolo Rosso. It's a loose leaf. It just grows loose leaves that you pick one by one. The romaines will grow a head in the middle and it's more vertical. This one still has some uh, more time to grow so it'll produce that romaine head. This growing guide is not only just for lettuces, you can use it for tatsoi, bok choy, mizunas, mustards. I'm gonna show you all of the different types that I have in my garden right now just to give you an idea. This grow guide can also be applied for Napa cabbages. This one is starting to form its head. Tender greens like this tatsoi. This is my favorite substitute for spinach. I am unable to grow spinach here in Florida. It's just way too hot. I'm never successful with it. But this tatsoi grows wonderfully. It's actually very heat tolerant. The leaves even look like spinach. I use it to make um, spinach and ricotta raviolis. It can also be applied to growing mizuna. This is a beautiful mizuna called dragon tongue. And this is another type of mizuna. It has like these blush pink stems at the bottom. Just really beautiful and lush. And the uh, bok choys. This is a bok choy variety called Purple Lady. And my personal favorite bok choy is this white stem Canton bok choy. I actually got to harvest this one. She's starting to go to flower. But man, look how big these leaves are. And they have these big crispy stems. And by the way, I probably have seeds for every single thing I mentioned in my videos on my website, jarasgarden.com. It's also good for growing mustard greens, like this ultraviolet mustard green or the Florida broadleaf mustard green. So let's grow some lettuce. First off, you have to decide if you're gonna plant them from transplants or are you gonna start them from seed? If you're gonna go the transplant route, you're gonna want to pop them in your garden when your average monthly high, temperature high, is 85 degrees or below. They do not like heat. So for me, that's the month of October. So I can go into my local nurseries and buy some transplants and plant them into my garden in October. But if you want to start them from seed, um, you're gonna wanna backtrack about eight weeks from whatever date you plan on getting them into the garden. So since I get them in the garden in October, I'm gonna backtrack eight weeks, that puts me in the month of August. So that's when I'm gonna start all of my lettuce seeds and greens, tatsoi, napa cabbage, all of that in these little seed trays. This is my preferred method so far. And, um, one problem though, especially if you're in zones eight and up where it's very hot in August, um, that heat will stunt the growth of your little seedlings. So if you notice that they have been staying super tiny for a long time and haven't really changed or grown much, they were probably exposed to too much heat. It'll also cause them to bolt, which simply means they'll start the process of flowering. They'll send up a main stem and start the flowering process, which means it's at, it's going towards the end of its life cycle, and that's not good either. So since August is way too hot outside, we're still getting high 90s outside, um, I start them from seed indoors exclusively. 
But if you can't do that, you don't have space indoors, you don't have a way to do that, then just wait until it's time to direct sew them when your average monthly high temperatures are 85 degrees or below. And I know when that happens because I follow a website called plantmaps.com. You put in your zip code, it'll tell you what gardening zone you're in, your average first and last frost dates, and at the very bottom, there's like a chart for every single month. It'll tell you the average high and the average low temperature. So that's really important to know. Um, you can garden based on temperatures, and sometimes that's a much better guideline than waiting for if, when, maybe that first or last cold front might come through. So let me show you how I sow seeds in a pot. As you can see, the seeds are pretty tiny, and you only need a couple of them because they have they are very easy to germinate. So just sprinkle them on the surface and you're gonna gently just scratch them in, no need to cover it with like soil over the top and then press them into the soil surface and then just keep this moist and in a bright sunny location because that light will help speed up the germination process. And if you're gonna direct sow them, it is great to find like empty spots or bare spots in your garden. They also grow really well in the holes of like these cement blocks. So basically all you need to do is loosen up the soil surface and then you're gonna sprinkle them in here. If I had some blood meal next to me, I'd sprinkle in a good amount of blood meal in there too. And just gently, you know, kind of scratch them into the surface and then pack it down. Keep it watered until it starts germinating. Now let's talk about site selection. So lettuces don't need a ton of light. Actually, in general, uh, crops that you're eating, just the greens, like the leaves part of it, they're not producing like a head of broccoli or a tomato, a fruit, something like that. They don't need too much sunlight. So six hours max of like direct sunlight is it. And actually I find that if my lettuces get more than six hours, their edges start to burn and it also causes them to bolt uh, sooner rather than later. So I find that they grow very well in a spot that gets bright morning sun, but then complete afternoon shade. As far as soil requirements, they just like fluffy, light, composted, well composted soil. Um, they will grow pretty much anywhere though, even in sandy soil, like native Florida sandy soil, as long as you fertilize them adequately and they'll be just fine. And just keep them well watered. Lettuce is 95% water, so they do like a lot. If you notice that they're like wilting, definitely water them a little bit, but you don't want to overwater them to the point where it creates a situation where root rot will kill your plants. So I also find that growing them in like raised beds or in flat shallow containers like these ones here really helps just with the drainage and keeping the soil um, drier or just draining fast after I water them. Now let's talk about pests and diseases because there's a lot that are gonna come for these greens. The first thing I'm gonna recommend is that if you have any extra like green onions from when you're cooking or maybe you wanna grow some onions this season, plant separate onions in between all of this stuff, in between all of your greens because that will deter a lot of pests. They actually don't like the smell of alliums. Also aphids are going to be a problem this is 95% water and they're juicy. They will definitely love to suck the juices out of your lettuces and Asian greens. So for the aphids, there's a couple different things you'll wanna try. Usually if you have an aphid problem, it's actually an ant problem. So you'll wanna treat for the ants first. That's what I recommend. And then you're gonna to wanna to spray with peppermint oil, rosemary oil, or even neem oil. But you kinda of wanna be careful with that too because you're going to be eating these leaves, so I don't want to spray a bunch of oils on these leaves. Um, so it kind of gets a little difficult sometimes to control the aphids. But another um, great alternative is just planting um, nasturtiums as well, all over and between your crops, because the aphids will go attack the nasturtiums and then leave your beautiful leafy greens alone. And another tip that I have is go in here, examine your plants, and remove any dead, diseased, tired-looking old leaves, right? or anything that has been munched by other and like insects. Um, I don't think there's actual scientific research to confirm this to be true, but a lot of gardeners and including myself say that the smell of decaying old leaves will actually attract um, more pests. It kind of alerts the pests like where to go. There is a stressed out plant and go over there and munch on that plant. So I like to remove, usually it's like the bottommost leaves that are the oldest and dying. Just remove them, take them out. You can compost with them if you'd like. 
and you're going to get a lot of diseases too. <laughs> but if you grow them during the right time of the year, which for me here in Florida is fall, winter, and spring, the disease pressure is a lot less during this time of year. So I don't get too much in terms of diseases. Probably the number one thing is going to be powdery mildew, especially during fall and our winter here. It doesn't rain, but every morning when I come out here, there's just like a morning dew over everything. So that just means there's a lot of humidity, like not humidity, but like moisture in the air all the time. And that moisture staying on these leaves is going to uh, cause powdery mildew and stuff like that to proliferate. So if you ever do get powdery mildew, I have one treatment for that. And that is one cup of hydrogen peroxide, and that's the 3% mixed uh, with one gallon of water and that pretty much kills disinfects all of the pathogens powdery mildew all of that stuff Not just on my greens, but on my tomatoes and any of my other crops There's a lot more leaf diseases out there. Not just powdery mildew. I mean, there's blight There's yellow spot and this one right here is even getting some of that yellowing right there And for that type of thing the hydrogen peroxide spray will definitely help a little bit but also just, again, pruning out those dead, diseased leaves and keeping it clean will also help prevent the spread of whatever these pathogens are. I always joke that I'm in Florida, we get all the leaf diseases, I give up trying to identify them. We just get them all. And that's normal part of gardening, guys. So don't freak out if you get some yellowing leaves. Just remove them, keep them clean, and that will help prevent the spread. The only reason why you're growing this is to eat the greens. So we're gonna fertilize this with lots of nitrogen to promote lush, leafy green growth. You don't really have to worry about the other nutrients. So my absolute favorite and number one fertilizer for anything green, my lettuces, my tatsoys, my napa cabbages is blood meal. It's organic, it's very high in nitrogen. So anytime I'm transplanting a green, I will put a nice big handful of blood meal in that transplant hole and mix it up and I just find that it makes my the leaves of my plants very concentrated in color whether that be like dark green or red or whatever color that is they just look super healthy um, more so than what you find in the grocery store and if you're direct sowing seeds then I would scratch in a good amount of blood meal into the soil before you sprinkle your seeds over that and direct sow them and if all is well, you should be harvesting in 30 to 50 days, depending on the cultivar. And there's different ways you can harvest your lettuces. You can cut at the very bottom, at the base, the entire plant and just yank out the whole head and eat the, the whole thing in its entirety. Or you can harvest little individual leaves as you go along. That way you're not killing the whole plant or taking it out and it will keep growing new leaves. If you're enjoying this video and learning something new, make sure you subscribe to my channel. That way you'll get notified of every time that I post new videos. I am trying really hard to make grow guides for each and every crop that I grow in my garden. Also, if you want to find the same exact seeds and plants that I grow in my garden, you can check out my website, jarasgarden.com. I also post written down like monthly grow guides there if you want to get like a list of whatever crops I'm growing from each and every month. And I have a last tip for you guys, and that is succession sow your lettuces and your greens. That way you can keep a nice constant supply of these greens like all fall, winter, and spring. So in general, when it comes to like the lettuces and the tatsoys, I like to start a new batch from seed uh, every single month. And that just keeps it going, keeps it going. And as you can see here, this is my next little succession sowing that I've started here. So that way I can just keep harvesting greens until about March because... Once March rolls around, it gets really, really hot in my garden and they just start dying. So, But if you want to succession sow some of the bigger um, things like the Napa cabbages and the bok choys, I would give them a good like month and a half in between those. 